first episode of our newly launched podcast series behind the wickets where we'll be talking a lot about cricket in general indian cricket especially because that's our love and our passion i'll be your host bumit masmudar and along with me i have two other people joining this podcast who will be our co-host for this season sanket vora and bhavik mehta both of these are excellent cricketers themselves they've been playing for a long time for the community teams and cricket enthusiasts just like me Hey what's up bhai bhai sangeet bhai welcome to this first episode of our new podcast how's life well we are all excited for the upcoming series of india australia and uh, nervousness is there as well as excitement is there uh, because australia has been had a, had, a, had a wonderful series back home also but uh, they are in good form so nervous energies are there sangeet I absolutely agree. I am looking forward to this series very eagerly, and I'm sure all the fans around the world are looking forward to this series. Uh, so the topic that we'll be discussing today is, uh, yeah, as Bhumit mentioned, Border Gavaskar Trophy. Uh, let's start with uh, the team that has been announced for um, India as well as Australia. uh what do you say how our team looks uh, well well i mean what i see is uh, bumra is not in the team that is going to be a big 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 setback for us we also are struggling with uh, uh some sluggish form of our top order batsmen uh, uh coupled with yeah we do not have uh, rishabh pant in our team and that is also going to be a big uh set back for us uh, what do you say bumit yeah absolutely i agree and uh, the the other set back the major news that we got yesterday is that shreyas ayer might be out for first test now if we see past few test he has been the main in form batsman he and pant who have been rescuing our team from difficult situations and both are out of the team sure that makes way for new uh batters like maybe surya kumar might step in shubhan gill might get a game or we might even uh, be able to pull in uh sarfaraz khan now um that that there's a there's a place for him in the team now i don't know if he might still get a game or not but at least he deserves to be in the squad uh yep definitely in fact uh, it's been that kind of a thing when it comes to india australia series for last uh, few series now either of the teams are always uh, i think it started with 2018 tour of india in australia where australia was without uh, smith and warner uh, maybe that was mainly thanks to the ban uh, but we won't go there then in 2021 the iconic series of india in australia where we were literally playing with uh, whoever was available <laughs> and now also we are having a challenge of not having some keep i mean bumrah is irreplaceable and so is pant in test cricket and now with ayer not being there it brings us to the same challenge so fingers crossed i think india will prosper in this situation i absolutely agree but uh, let's see walking into the series uh, india holds the border gavaskar trophy at the moment also in the last three series uh, india has had the upper hand winning consecutively two series in australia now on the other hand australia who considers playing in india as the final frontier won the last test series in india 19 years back that was in 2004 5 see however considering australia's current form in the world test championship uh, yes they are at the top of the table they won the test series in pakistan uh, subcontinent conditions and they drew the series in sri lanka winning one losing one Uh, so i somehow feel that this will be australia's best chance to conquer fort india and come out victorious what do you say bumit that's true that's true but but before we jump on to australia let's let's try to predict the team that we have in front of us from from the indian squad uh, for the first two tests we see if we look at the squad we i i see openers when i look at this batting lineup i see rohit rahul shubman gill three openers at the least and then um so from these three what what do you reckon who who gets a game because 
see we let's be realistic uh, rohit is a captain rahul is a vice captain so in a, in all probability our team management doesn't want to drop them but then looking at what gil has been doing in past one and a half month uh, does he really deserve to be to get dropped well uh, i have a, a very <laughs> interesting uh, thought that is going inside my mind uh, what i would like to see and what as as you would say i think i would agree on uh, with you that what will happen but what i would like to see is i would like to see rohit and gil open and uh, we will need a specialized wicket keeper and since rahul is the opener and has not had good run at at international level at any uh, hasn't been consistent so i would like to see uh, rohit and gil open however in all probabilities it is likely that rohit and rahul will open so what's your thoughts on that sanjeev uh i agree with you bavik uh, i would see rohit and rahul opening and uh, with shreya sayer being ruled out of the first test uh, i i i have a strong feeling that gill who who has been an opener for long now and he has started his career as an opener with indian team uh, uh, he'll get a chance to play in the middle order and uh, probably when the new ball comes in uh, in the later half uh, he might be able to uh, step in and uh, show his form continue with his purple patch uh, in the middle order and rescue the indian team what is that bone that's true that's true um, probably gill might get a game but then see again i feel if gill gets a game it should be as an opener because that's that's how we look at him in the long run uh, rohit sharma what plays now for another couple of years or maybe three but then who's the next opener rahul for uh, i don't i don't know why but we've been persisting with rahul for a long time now and he he has given those special performances but those have been too far and too few to count and the consistency which we uh, need at the top of the order uh, especially when we are playing teams like australia or england and in those conditions i think gill uh, i just believe gill might be able to handle those better than rahul from what we have seen and also i think it, it's it's probably time to ride on his form right now i mean look at the form he has he scored a century in test against bangladesh a double in odis and then again a century again in t20 so in all formats he has been scoring runs so i think it's it's time we uh, you know give him what's due well i was just uh, looking at stats uh, and i guess uh, if you look at the last few series rahul has been pretty much inconsistent uh, and uh, besides uh, i would like to bring another angle to it uh, now that pant is not there uh are you looking at rahul as a specialist keeper or uh, you want a specialist keeper to play my concern is that if we might risk to play rahul as wicket keeping batsman because uh contribution from wicket keeper as a batsman also will be significant the risk we are taking is playing a mid shift keeper and that to in test matches and if in all likeliness we are going to play on a turning pitch which nagpur and firosha gotla the first two days has the history of that could be a major challenge for the team management to take i mean that's a major call for the team management to take ah uh, i agree bavik but uh, persisting with rahul uh, and it was a surprise that he was announced a vice captain in the team which shows that the team management uh, is still having confidence in the batsmen and uh, Yes, uh, we'll, uh, we all agree that uh, as Rishabh Pant is uh, missing, we'll need a wicket keeper. Now, what are the options that we have there? The other two specialist keepers are uh, As Bharat and uh, uh, Ishan Kishan. Uh, we have seen Ishan Kishan lately, um, um, just barring one match in Bangladesh where he scored 200 uh, in an ODI. all the ma- matches that he played posed that um, his form was uh, really very worrisome and his uh, technique against spinners is really a question mark uh, and actually putting him into a team against uh, uh, nathan lyon and probably 
some other spinners i don't see him performing too well so the option that we are left with is shrikar bharat and though he has been traveling with the team for a long time now uh, as a backup keeper of uh, rishabh pant he hasn't had a chance to play a full time match um, i do not see him contributing in ranji trophies as well now the only reason being he has been traveling with the indian cricket team so it would be a very big uh, uh, question for the team management of as to who to consider them uh, as as their uh, frontline wicket keeper so it might be uh, rahul will be actually keeping the wickets uh, considering uh, he has kept the wickets in white ball cricket and uh, uh, actually putting uh, as bharat or ishan kishan into the team directly facing australians would be a challenge for them gomit so but uh, what you said is bharat has been traveling with the team as a backup keeper for pant now when he we actually need a backup keeper for pant why are we looking at uh, other options i mean what what does that even tell us about the thought process that management has when you have a backup keeper in mind in in mind or who has been traveling with the team as that shouldn't he be a direct selection at this stage well yeah and and uh, I, I, another another interesting uh, point is that uh, when uh, which, which, which side of risk you are willing to take uh, you are compromising yes maybe uh, on merit at least on paper rahul is a better batsman than shrikar bharat but uh, he might score 20 30 40 50 more runs But what if you lose an important stumping or a catch of Steve Smith or uh, Labushenge or or Quaja, the form he is in, that might cost you hundred more runs. So that's the balance I think the team management will have to strike. Absolutely, Bavik. And uh, let's see. This is basically a question that uh, uh, Rohit Sharma and Rahul Dravid must be struggling with a problem of plenty, and uh, that's that's their uh, headache now. <laughs> let's get into some i have a, uh, one more one more thing i'd like to throw to both of you now if i'm not wrong ajinkya rahane was vice captain before he was dropped out of the squad and if i'm not wrong i think in series in south africa in 2014 15 or maybe in england in that same tour 14 15 ajinkya rahane did not play one of the tests he was dropped while he was still the vice captain of the team I I so, completely agree Bavik but that would have been in the middle of the series when you are not sure of the form um, and when you are struggling with the form rather I would say and then the management takes a hard call that though is a wise captain he'll be dropped uh, now but when we are starting a series now uh, I do not see a wise captain being dropped uh, it doesn't make a sense uh, to announce him as a wise captain and starting first match will drop him right so uh let uh, rahul dravid and uh, rohit sharma <laughs> yeah i think we won't be so uh, so i think sanket is of the opinion that rahul will open uh, i think all of us agree that eventually management will take that call but we would like to see gil open uh, what's your thought rohit uh, govin rohit how i wish <laughs> <laughs> no so yeah yeah maybe maybe um, I, i'm still iffy about uh, rahul's Place in the team, I don't know. That's just maybe a. It's maybe because we just won't. Want, we don't yeah, want yeah, to see that. That's kind of propelling. It. True, true. <laughs> that that might just be a biased opinion that I have. But uh, uh, the big miss, Shreya Sayer, um, are probably yeah. someone who's been in the best form in this current uh, test lineup. He yeah. misses. Who comes in? Surya Kumar Yadav, or do you reckon Sarfaraz might get a call for this? again again it's because surya kumar is already in the squad it is likely that he might get a game ahead of uh, surya kumar but then if if as sanket is uh, seeing if gil is seen in middle order then neither might see a game <laughs> so it's going to be interesting but yes i would like to see sarfaraz uh, come in the team and the theory what i have is that when Uh, the team has uh, traveled so much uh, and we keep playing on uh, seeming conditions when we travel abroad 
so the core team doesn't have exposure to playing good quality spin uh, and that's where Sarfaraz having been playing Ranji Trophy consistently and that was one of the reasons why Shreya Sayal was more consistent as opposed to other batsmen in my opinion so I would like to see Sarfaraz in the uh, middle order uh, in fact I would also throw another dice how about Jadeja batting at 6 uh, considering his form, uh, he's also played a Ranji game, uh, also it's been only one game, but uh, over the last four years, if you see that the most consistent batsmen for India have been Rishabh Pan, Ravindra Jadeja and with whatever 6-7 games Shreya Sayar have played, these three have been the most consistent batsmen. Bhavik, I would agree with you, but uh, I would say uh, when I say Rahul will open and Gil will be in the middle order, doesn't mean uh, uh, Surya Kumar doesn't get a chance. The reason being, uh, if at all Rahul opens uh, and if at all the management considers him to be keeping the wickets, the sixth batting option is still open. And uh, Sky, uh, Surya Kumar, um, I would say would be a like-to-like -like replacement for Rishabh Pant, considering uh, the batting form that he is in and uh, he likes to take on the ballers from the word go so uh, the way uh, Rishabh Pant used to destroy the ballers coming into the middle order and give us and used to give us the stability there I see uh, Surya Kumar Yadav playing a similar role there coming at number six and uh, just taking on the ballers and destroying them uh, giving a good uh, balance to the team. What do you say, Bumit? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I am looking at the squad and I, I believe that that is a possibility now with Shreyas <laughs> out. We might be able to pull a couple of batters and make Rahul keep the wicket. Only thing is, my concern is um, what Bhavik already addressed and that's keeping a 20-over match and keeping in a 90-over test match is is way different so i i don't know it needs a, a longer period of uh, concentration from keeper i don't know how effective rahul will be behind the wickets and do we really want to you know risk missing a catch or an important stumping uh, so yeah that that's something we'll have to uh, i don't know maybe only time will tell and the other point is jadeja now when you look at this batting lineup there's no left-hander batsman there at all so Getting Jadeja up in the order might be worth the risk because he has been in form. I don't know. I mean, he's coming back after a long time. So, we don't know how, how well he might be able to bat right off, right off, right away. But then, yeah, that could be one option. So, but but I believe batting lineup more or, look, more or less looks uh, done and dusted here. Um, so, uh, what's your, uh, let's let's go to the prediction of the batting lineup. We we'll yeah. the entire, we, we need to discuss ballers also, but uh, Pumit, what's your, uh, what's your prediction? What is going to be the top six? Well, I, I'll say Rohit, Gill, Pujara, uh, Kohli. That's my top four. I don't want uh, Rahul in there, but that's my personal choice. And then comes Rahul at number five, Sky at number six. And maybe Jaddu. Hold on, hold on. So we are on top six. But yeah, top, top, six, that's, that's top, six, top six, that's that's my top six. That's your top six. Uh, okay. My top six would be similar to what Bumit says. I would also like to open with Gil, considering his current scintillating form. Uh, so he uh, partners with uh, Rohit. Uh, third would be Pujara. Fourth would be Kohli. The four are set. Now, fifth would be the vice captain has to stay in the team, right? So, Rahul will be in the team. The question would be the sixth batting option. Would it be a specialized keeper? Uh, do we go with uh, Shikhar Bharat? Or would it be uh, Rahul keeping the wickets and we have a, <clears throat> a scintillating form Surya Kumar Yadav in the team? So, it would be between... Uh, Shikar Bharat or Surya Kumar, that would be my top six. And I would like to throw my, I would like to go by my gut feeling and my wish list also. So I would like to see Gil and Rohit open, Pujara at three, Kohli at four, have a wildcard entry of Sarfaraz Khan at five, Surya Kumar Yadav at six, 
that's what I would like to see and that's what I feel somehow I have that instinct that management will go for a gutsy call of uh, but then who, sorry who not keeps? sorry not uh, sorry five will be uh, I forgot the wicket keeper that's not work that doesn't work <laughs> so you need a wicket keeper so Surya Kumar sits out and uh, Shrikar Bharat bats at six okay so you're okay. not taking sir, Rahul in the team no no Rahul no, no Sky no Rahul no Surya Kumar yeah. okay. I will have Sarfaraz and uh, Bharat all right I know he's still not in the squad, but I'm just banking what I feel. Okay, so with the top six batsmen covered, let's move on to the all-rounders of our team. We have three to be specific and we are looking forward to Jaddu's comeback. He has already started uh, playing in the Ranji trophies with some good form, taking seven wickets in second innings. Uh, yeah, he could not score much in that match. But with Akshar's current form in red ball cricket, especially in India, when he stepped in for an injured uh, Ravindra Jadeja, he has actually uh, done wonders. Uh, do you see two left armers playing in the same squad? Now with that, what happens is you'll have to put Kuldeep Yadav out. <laughs> he is also doing good. Uh, I mean, whom do you put out? We are actually spoiled for choices, right? I, I don't see two left armers. The plain reason is when you when we we'll discuss the Australian squad, there are just too many left-handed batsmen there. And I, I don't think it makes sense to play so many left armers, especially Jadeja and Aksar who are you know, kind of like carbon copy of each other when it comes to their bowling style, batting style. So, in fact, I would say batting Jadeja is, has proved to be a much better batsman than Aksa so far. By far. Uh, but, um, and, and the form that Jadeja struck in, in, in his only Ranji match that he played, picking seven wickets in, in an inning. I mean, I'm sure it must have sent jitters down Australia's lineup. Sure. Uh, before we go there, I would like to. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, how about four, playing all four spinners? <laughs> <laughs> if you are talking about turners and uh, going back to the days when uh, Patodi and uh, those guys used to just bowl one, two overs and then the spinners would take over, something like that may happen. But no, no. So, on a serious note, uh, yes, it's going to be again a very, very difficult call for uh, the selectors. Jadeja, with his last four years, performance uh, as both as baller and batsman and the magic he brings with the field must not be forgotten also and just because he got injured do you give chance to somebody who's been performing so i think somebody is going to be done unjust as well whomever you don't play you're going to be unjust to that player uh your idea of playing four spinners on a turner uh do you think would backfire on us because our current batsmen, uh, the top order batsmen, um, we have seen lately in the Bangladesh series struggled yep. pathetically and uh, the way they performed uh, showed that uh, they are not that confident facing the spinners and top class spinners whereas now in Australia series we are going to face Nathan Lamb, uh, Travis Head and Sweepson. Uh, that is Sweepson, right, so there are three Mr. spinners Ashton Agar yeah. is the left arm spinner. Uh, we have already struggled against left arm spinner in the last series that we played in India. And that was Steve O'Keffe, who actually won the match single handedly. So it's going to be interesting how, what sort of pitches uh, are going to be prepared. But looking at our strength, I would say with Boomra out, uh, I, I'm sure that we'll be preparing turners. But uh, yeah. Uh, it's going to be a challenge for Indian batsmen as well. I think that's been the trend. I mean, even when Bumrah was there in England series or even last Australia series, majority of the surfaces have been turners. Except barring the Dharmashala last time around, uh, most of the pitches have been turners. And uh, so that's not, I don't think that would be a surprise that we will be playing on turners. And uh, the thought of playing four spinners was only because you accommodate all four uh, and play Jadeja mainly as a batsman and only if required he bowls uh, and that, that's that's the idea 
Yes, sir, I agree. If, if you ask me, my pick for spinners would be Jadeja, Ashwin, and Kuldeep, hands down. I, I don't think Ak- Akshar gets a game as long as Jadeja is playing well. If Jadeja completely bombs in both batting bowling department, then we might look for uh, a replacement in Akshar's form. But uh, uh, I don't I don't think that's happening any sooner. Well, I would start with both the left arm spinners in the team. Though that's not a traditional way to go for. We do not have two off spinners in a team. Same way we do not have two left arm orthodox spinners in the team. But looking at their forms with both bat and ball, I would still uh, put a bet on that uh, and play the three spinners as Ashwin, Jadeja and Akshar. Um, with Akshar, you actually get uh, a cushion of uh, getting some 25-30 odd runs. And with Kuldeep, we struggle there. Yeah, Kuldeep, with his form with the ball, he actually was dropped after securing man of the match in first match in Bangladesh series. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. It would be a very difficult call for the team management to pick the frontline three spinners. What's your take though? Uh, you said it, right? Akshar, I said that Ashwin. it would be Akshar, Jadeja right. and uh, Ashwin. Yeah, that works. How about you? Bye. I would like to see Jadeja, Akshar, Kuldeep, Ashwin and all four. That's, that's what I would like to see. I'm going out of the box. I'm just... You're a bowler. I'm sure you'd like to see 11 bowlers in the <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. You need some scruns to defend also, so... We but already have six batsmen. Oh, wow. So, four, four spinners is an interesting concept. But then, so, so then let's jump to the remaining uh, paces that we need in our team. Now, the paces that are part of this squad is Shami, uh, Shiraj, Umesh Yadav and Jaydev Unatkat. Yeah, your thoughts? Hands down, Siraj. I think uh, the way he has uh, come up the ranks over the last couple, ever since he's debuted, uh, I mean, red ball, there was no doubt about his uh, abilities and uh, the amount of ball, just the amount of number of overs he's, he's bowled in domestic circuit over the before his debut and uh, thereafter in Test Arena. It, there was no doubt that Siraj was going to be a very good prospect in Test cricket. But just the way he has improved in white ball cricket over the last year or so, just goes to show the guy is uh, is so much uh, is learning so much and putting in so much effort and and the performance also. Uh, so I mean, in my opinion, hands down, Siraj uh, plays uh, ahead of everyone else as as a spin, as a uh, pacer and. If we are to play two seam uh, bowlers, as it might likely happen, apart from what I feel like what should happen, uh, I think it will be Mohammad Shami and Mohammad Siraj. So that's my uh, uh, opinion. I, I agree with that. Even my pick would be Shami and Siraj only. Yeah, Shami and Siraj. But uh, see, looking at Umesh Yadav's form, especially in India, with the reverse swing that we get after the ball gets old. He has been deadly in all the <clears throat> matches that he has played in the past. And we know what he can do with the ball river swinging at a pace of 135-140. It actually uh, sends shivers in the batsman's mind. And uh, I, w- I would actually put up my bet on Umesh Yadav as well. Uh, if at all we consider uh, not giving a turner with it. In which case, we see three paces uh, bowling in tandem and uh, probably just two spinners. Let's see, yeah, uh, I would agree that Siraj has grown in his confidence with the form that he has been in and he'll be our number one bowler, now, who, who should be a like-to-like replacement for Bumra. And uh, I see him uh, actually taking quick wickets uh, with the new ball and he's, he's actually... Uh, bowling at an exceptional uh, uh, speed uh, with his performance. Yes, looking forward to it. Yeah. Alright, so I think we <clears throat> have jotted down more or less the playing 11 for first two tests. It looks like, uh, except for Sarfaraz and Bharat, rest of the thing, and of course the four spinners that <laughs> Bhavik wants in his team. Rest of the team looks to be in sync, but uh, looking at this team on paper, Last thoughts about this team. Ah, looks 
a very heavyweight team doesn't look like there is any other team who can defeat us and yet we hear australia playing against india and it still makes us jittery what's up with that i think it's just mainly to do with uh, the recent performance of australia uh, that's that's kind of uh, been scary uh, to say the least and uh, also the the only i think concerning aspect is the top uh, performance of our top order in, in against spinners especially against spinners otherwise also it's been uh, below average uh, as compared to the standards they have set for themselves uh, but uh, i think that's the only concern but uh, we also need to understand that whatever performance australia has got has been largely in conditions favoring them pakistan has been playing on belters batting belters so i'm not considering pakistan as as similar conditions to playing in india uh, and also pakistan test squad is i don't think anywhere close to as competitive as we are so on those lines i am not as worried yes i am nervous because of uh, certain aspects but i think it's going to be interesting cake walk no we'll, we'll see walk in the park for us <laughs> <laughs> it will never be a cake walk against australia whether you play them uh, in india or australia they'll be in your face every game and uh, you'll have to keep that momentum going for you you'll have to strike from first ball you'll have to ensure that all the sessions belong to india only in that case you'll be able to uh, come victorious looking forward thank you very much that's a wrap from our side for this episode of behind the wickets if you loved it don't forget follow or subscribe to our podcast so that you don't miss out on a single episode you can follow us on socials our handles and channel names are updated in the description until next time goodbye one two